Hey, welcome everybody back to Broncos Gaming World. We're taking a look at our Arkham Horror Path to Carcosa campaign with our girlfriend here, Jenny Barnes. We are into the Unspeakable Oath today. So right here we're taking a look at our deck that we're going to run today. I made a couple of changes with Adaptable. It allows me to change two level zero cards out of our deck. Uh, I removed a Knife and added a think on your feet as well as i removed our painkillers and added a second emergency cash we'll see if that's going to be anything that actually helps us or not i'm not 100 percent sure we'll see um so yeah there we are uh still running the uh the derringer a pair of flashlights the switchblade for 45s the green man medallion holy rosary we spent our xp on an upgraded version of leo as well as the adaptable and streetwise permanent cards here. Uh, I've got two experience that I did not spend. Odds are I'll probably dump them into something like an upgraded switchblade or something of that ilk, depending on if I run into any uh, additional um, any additional uh, physical or mental traumas along the way because if those if those creep up then i'm kind of screwed and i need to uh try to address those right now i've got one mental trauma on me and that's tolerable but i don't want to really get a whole lot more than that if i can help it because that's just going to put us in a bad spot overall if i get two then i'm down to what five five uh five sanity and that's just not gonna that's not going to be enough to uh not have to deal with it i mean i have the holy rosary right now anyway because i feel like there's a good chance that i'm going to end up with some additional mental trauma because if searching for izzy comes up nine times out of ten it's so bad that it, for us that it's just difficult to be able to actually find our way to accomplishing its uh its requirement for us so i, I figured i may as well bite the bullet early Let's get the Holy Rosary. It also adds a plus one brain to us, which is helpful. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll at least help us out down the line. Um, you know, with running the uh, the cards from from the from her novel, from the uh, the Hour of the Huntress novel, we end up getting an extra uh, weakness, which is the Sacrificial Beast, and we also get the Green Man Medallion though for it. So it's a somewhat of a trade. I don't know if I would say it's a fair trade, but it's a trade. So we are, uh, I think we're about ready to proceed into, uh, onto the game board and see, uh, see how we do with the unspeakable oath today. We'll, uh, we'll see. Cause I, uh, I'm pretty sure that if things go poorly here, the campaign can actually end. So we'll, uh, we'll have to take a look and see how that goes for us today. Here we go. We're loading up our deck here. Got, uh. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to download my deck, so here we go. Let's uh, go ahead and put that in there. Jenny's Path to Carcosa incoming. And then we'll uh we'll read the intro and we will launch this ship into orbit and see what happens. Oh my opening hand is questionable. We don't like that so far. Unspeakable oath. Yeah, this is one of those quests where I think early on you can, or early in your campaign, because we're still, we're like quest four here. Early in our campaign, you we can actually lose this campaign right here, I think. So in this mission, I think there's a, a potential to uh, end up losing the campaign right here. Let's, uh... All right. We're on to scenario four, the unspeakable oath. One, two, three. All right. So check your campaign log. If the following followers of the sign have found the way forward, read intro one. I don't believe that that has occurred for us. The followers of the sign. Uh, no, we did not. Uh, we did not do that just yet. Uh, so we get to, we skipped intro two. So we're on intro two. 
this. Over the course of the next few days, you delve into the evidence you've collected, hoping to find any information regarding Daniel Chesterfield, a stagehand during the previous production of The King in Yellow. As far as you can tell, he is the only surviving member of that production's cast and crew. The rest of them, that is, for those for, for those whom you can find any records at all, disappeared or died soon after opening night in a variety of fashions connected only by their morbidness, freak accidents, suicides, and vanishing. It would seem that Daniel is your only lead, and if you are to investigate further, according to the record you found, he was admitted to Arkham Asylum many years ago. All documentation about Daniel's treatment seems to end there. You're unsure if he's even still alive. Perhaps he was cursed and released, or was cured and released. You're hoping to avoid this. You're hoping to avoid this, but there seems to be only one way to find out. You've collected your belongings and then head downtown towards Arkham Asylum. We get to intro three. As you enter the asylum, you you stop to speak with it with the receptionist. Though you feel your your body, though you though you feel your body urge you to step deeper into the clutches of this madhouse. It gives you a confused expression. It gives you a confused expression as you tell him of the King in Yellow and of Daniel. But at your insistence, he pours through the file the file cabinet, eventually pulling out a stark white folder. Inside is a wealth of information about the patients admitted to the asylum, medical records, psychiatric evaluations, and the like. You recognize a few of the faces as he flips through the pages. Daniel Chesterfield, yes, as he he is admitted under a special care of Doctor Mintz. But you can't see him. His level is restricted to staff only. You argue and insist to be let into the patient wing, knowing that Daniel must hold the key to understanding what is really going on. The, reception, the receptionist gives a pitying smile and relents, nodding to the security guard nearby. Oh, of, of course, of course, he says with all honesty, with all the honesty of a street peddler. I will schedule a meeting for you with Dr. Mintz so that you can speak with him about Daniel. These gentlemen will see you in. Relieved that you will soon get the answers you seek, you are escorted into the patient wing of Arkham Asylum. This check the campaign log. If Constance Dumaine is listed under VIPs, VIPs interviewed, proceed to Constance's information. She absolutely is, was interviewed by us, so we get Constance's information. Uh, it says, Constance's information. You recall what Constance had told you when you spoke, spoke with her during her hellish dinner party. She and the other members of the cast and crew have been told by their director, Nigel Ingram, to take some kind of oath at first, she'd written she'd written it off as a whim of eccentric uh, of an eccentric art an eccentric artist, something Mr. Ingram did as a strange formality to unite and strengthen the bonds of the cast and crew. To his credit, he, she claimed that she claimed that it, that it had worked ever since they had taken the, taken a strange this strange oath, and she she and other members of the troupe felt much more confident to pull to, uh, and full of spirit. Perhaps Daniel had, had a similar experience during the last production of The King in Yellow. You must speak with him about this. Uh, each investigator places the top card of his or her deck face down on his or her play area without looking at it. Treats this card as a, as a courage asset with a zero cost and no icons. And to sanity. Discard this card if it leaves play for any reason. We get to proceed to the setup. Oh, we have one mental trauma. We will add two cultists to the back. All right, so it says gather all the cards for the following counter sets. Unspeakable Oath, Haster's Gift, Inhabitants of Carcosa, Delusions and Decay and Filth, and the Agents of Haster. These are the sets indicated by the following icons. So each monster enemy among the gathered encounter sets aside in a separate pile. There should be seven. So each lunatic enemy among the gathered encounter sets aside in a separate pile. There should also be seven of those. Randomly choose one copy of Arkham of Arkham of, of Asylum Hall's Eastern Patient Wing and one copy of Asylum Hall Western Patient Wing. Remove those copies from the game and put the remaining Asylum Halls into play, into play. Each investigator begins play in an Asylum Halls of his choice. Set the following cards aside out of play: Daniel Chesterfield and a copy of uh, and each copy of, of Patient Confinement. Put the following locations into play: Mess Hall, Kitchen Yard, Guard. Garden, infirmary, basement. Based on your difficulty, uh, add the following cast tokens to the bag. We're in our solo playthroughs right now. Um, because I am not familiar with all of these quests, I am playing on easy. And I, I can tell you, it is not easy mode. It's just the chaos bag is a little gentler. So we will put the easy chaos bag out. And I get to generate some cards here. Says check the campaign log. Depending on the following current circumstances, a different version of Act Two should be in the scenario. Each other version of Act Two is removed. 
if I took the Onyx Clasp, take act, you know, use Act 2, the really bad ones. Otherwise, use Act 2, the really bad, bad ones, version 2. We get version 1 because I have the Onyx Clasp. And shuffle the remainder of the deck. All right. So here is how we would want to put it. Asylum Halls, Asylum Halls, the Infirmary. Okay. So no problem. So there is one of each of these. I'm going to take the second one of uh, each of them. So these ones get put away. See ya. Oh. Throw you in the pile over here. I have to create some cards. So we're going to create. We have to create a minus two. Two. I need to check the chaos bag to see if there's any. Uh, stuff in there that I don't need. Nope. So, close and shuffle that. I need to create two cultists. There he is. And two of those. Add those to the bag. And we've got to create our friend, the man in the pallet mass. There he is. He gets to go into my hand, which is fun. All right, so we get the, uh, let's take a look at how they want it to lay it out again. All right, so we're going to get like an Asylum Halls here. An Asylum Halls, Asylum Halls, and it's Asylum Halls West. Put these two. Like that. 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 And then there's the, inf we've got the kitchen. The kitchen's going to be all the way over here. We get the mess hall. There. The part is, is I don't know if I'll need a whole lot of connecting things here. We've got the infirmary. Here. And we've got the yard. The yard is connected to here. And the garden, garden's going to be out here. And then we get the uh, the basement hall. The basement hall is going to be down here. No problem. All right, so we will shuffle the man and pallet mask into our deck. Get these put into the chaos bag. Yoink. Shuffle that up. Let's take a look at our opening hand. All right. So our opening hand, we've got the uh, flashlight, a pair of hard knocks, emergency cash, and a switchblade. I'll start here because it looks like I can get to these two locations first and try to get them done as fast as possible. Front. Door leading into the basement hall is locked. You cannot enter the basement, so we can't go down there. Sorry about that. I need to turn on our game screen here. There we go. All right, so there we go. There's our game screen so you guys can see everything. Let's go ahead and read the Act 1. Or, excuse me, Agenda 1. Agenda 1A, locked inside. The patient wing of the asylum is far quieter and lonelier, lonelier than you had expected. The hall reeks of chemicals and body odor. As soon as you're escorted inside, the doors behind you are closed and locked tight. Act 1 says, Arkham Asylum, aside from a few patients giving you a wide berth, there aren't any, any orderlies or doctors around to speak with. It looks like you'll have to find Mr. Chesterfield on your own. All right, and there's three clues per person, so I'll need to find three clues. The locked inside only has two, um, two doom to, to progress. We also need to get rid of the version two of Act Two. So that is going to go away. Down here. In there. There are two other other agendas so we should be we should have some time i won't say we have a lot of time but we have some time all right and our uh here is the unspeakable oath chaos bag for us 
Got a minus one for the skulls. If you fail, randomly uh, choose an enemy from among the set-aside monster enemies and place it beneath the act deck without looking. The cultists, which is the ones that we have, are minus X. X is the amount of horror on us. That's unfortunate. I do start with one mental trauma, so I will have a horror on me, but that does not count towards that because I just come into the game with one less, one less horror than normal. Take a look at our decks here to make sure that those two enemy decks are are out there. Since we just have seven lunatics, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as well as seven monsters. I see the seven monster. Seven. Okay, I'm not going to look at them. I'm going to shuffle them up a little bit, but I'm not going to look at them. Okay. I assume at some point all the asylum patrons get released into the wild. All right, so we're going to take a look at our opening hand here. Our opening hand says that we've got a pair of, I think the, the switchblade is nice. A pair of hard knocks, we don't need them both, so I will mulligan and I'm gonna mulligan one of those. I don't, uh, I don't think I'll need to mulligan anything else. I'll mulligan that into the man in the pallid mask. He is a weakness, so that does not happen. Shuffle that and draw For the mulligan. We drew the sink on our feet. Good, good, good. All right, so we are ready to go into our first turn. We are at the investigator stage, or investigator phase of the first turn of the game. We also get Streetwise on board. It's a permanent card. Gives us the ability to boost ourselves. And we have Adaptable, which we have already used this game. Right out of the box, I'm going to spend two, and I'll put, my, for my first action, you put Hard Knocks into play. Put that into play. My second action is going to be to Play my emergency cash. Generate three more resources. And my third is going to be to, for now, will be to put my flashlight out. Those are our three actions. All right. We're, uh, we're ready. Nothing going on. No enemies. We're going to uh, ready to refresh and ready for the next round. One doom. Incoming Lone Wolf's good draw for us. Here comes our encounter card. Boom, we've got a uh, corrosion. It is a hazard revelation. Discard item assets from play and or from your hand with a total printed cost of at least X or X is the shroud value of our location. We did not reveal our location. Let's take a look at that before we go any farther. Uh, Arkham Halls says. Present atmosphere of the reception area disappeared as soon as Dr. As Dr. Mint shut the thick iron door behind them. The, the temperature dropped to a clammy chill and a foul, dark, or foul, sharp stench hung in the air. All right. There's one clue here with a shroud of two. This after you... All right, so I need to... I'll take a horror. So I take a horror because I stayed here and I gained two resources mistake on my part but that's okay as they walked through the meandering stone halls of the, of the sanatorium carolyn began to feel uneasy it seemed like it would be very easy to get lost route two so i need to with my card here i need to uh discard item assets from play and or from your hand with a total printed resource cost of at least x guess that means my flashlight goes away bye bye and again surge so it surges into Something I put in my hand. Excellent. Surges into the Gift of Madness. As it puts it into our hand. It says, I cannot attack lunatic enemies. Must uh, randomly choose one enemy from among the set aside monster enemies and place it beneath the act deck without looking at it. To get rid of this card. Discard Gift of Madness from Pity from your hand. So that's what I would have to do to get rid of that. I don't want to do that right now. Alright, so that's our turn. We'll uh, spend one to get Lone Wolf into play. Lone Wolf out there. And I will investigate here. It is a Shroud 2 with my skill of 3. I will spend 2 resources. 1 and 2. To boost my E by 3. So I am a 5 
versus a 2. Minus 1, so we succeed and get the one clue in here. For my last action, I will move into the infirmary. The scratched plaque on the wooden door reads, Infirmary, this must be where the doctors treat their patients. Put that. Uh, I can spend an action to heal a damage and, and take a one direct horror, or heal one horror and take one direct damage. So you can swap damage and stuff around. There's one clue in here with a shroud of three. Okay. So we're off to ready and ready, because there's no enemies yet. But we will trigger the locked inside to flip. Locked inside flips to the patients. Speaking with the patients is proving more difficult than you had assumed. They eye you cautiously and refuse to, refuse to answer any of your questions, backing away and, f and f fleeing if confronted. Either they're not used to guests or something about you is causing them a considerable amount of distress. Some act like animals backed into a corner and you think at any moment they may strike. Shuffle the encounter, discard pile, and each of the set-aside lunatic enemies into the encounter deck. The lead investigator must randomly choose an enemy from, from among the set-aside monster enemies and place it beneath the, the act deck without looking. All right. So we'll... uh, we got a little bit of stuff to do here. This is a draw unrevealed. So we will draw it unrevealed. Put it right there. And then we got to go put that card into the encounter deck as well as all of the lunatic enemies. Yay. All of the lunatic enemies. Mad patients, get in there. What's this guy? Maniac, get in there. I remember that they're can end up being a ton of enemies in here. Young psychopath, get in there. All right. Shuffle it up. Odds are one of them are going to be close to the top of the deck. I don't see how they won't be. All right, and now we will reveal the next agenda. Boom, here it is. Torturous Descent. The longer you spend in this hellish place, the more you want to leave. Already it has felt like days. You fear that you're stuck here... That you are stuck here much longer, you will become. If you're stuck here much longer, you'll become like the patients, a husk of your former self, unruly and dangerous. All right. So we have uh, proceeded to the next agenda, and now we get an encounter card from the Mythos phase. Another corrosion. Got to be kidding me. Um. Well, that unfortunately means our knife is going to go away. Can't do anything about it. I'm gonna, I shouldn't have surged into that, so I'm going to discard this card. Actually, I'm just not going to draw a card for, for... This card shouldn't have hit. I'm just going to discard this, because I shouldn't have had it to begin with. And I'll discard my Switchblade, because I did discard cards for it. So that should end the turn. Alright, that's the end of the Mythos phase. So it's our turn again. I have a smooth two cars in hand. Two horror. Take a damage to heal horror. That's not so bad right now. All right, so we're looking at... Man, I'd really like to get Leo out there. Because he gives us... You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to get... I'm going to put Leo out. So that's five. I'll put Leo into play. I generate one at the beginning of my turn for Lone Wolf. Up there, over on me. And I will spend two to uh, investigate at this location. So it's a Shroud 3 versus a skill of 5. We draw minus one, so we succeed. So we gain that one. Don't have any other way to improve what I'm doing. I'm gonna need that card, I think. 
Um, so my last action, actually I have two more actions. I will uh, generate a resource so that I can investigate again with my last one. Play Leo, investigate, generate a resource, investigate. Up by two with my uh, streetwise. Oh, we failed. Okay. No problem. No enemies on the board. But we are uh, ready and ready. Here we go. Card docks, terrible card draw for us. No enemies, so we will draw our encounter card. We draw the Dance of the Yellow King. It is a treachery. Or a uh, packed treachery. If there are no Luna enemies in play, then the Yellow King King surges. It surges because we do not have any enemies in play. And it surges into a card I put in my hand. Uh, Gift of Madness. Um, I cannot trigger abilities on locations. No problem there. That's actually not a problem, I don't think. Okay. So now we're here, so I cannot trigger that. That's okay, though. I have two clues. What am I doing? God, I now have my head screwed on straight. Basically wasted an action. All right, so instead of investigating that second time, I was going to draw a card. So I'm going to do that because I completely wasted a, a turn there. All right, so here we go. Um... My first action. Let's uh, we'll go here. I cannot go here. We'll go. Here. All right. It says the asylum halls. The pleasant atmosphere of the reception area disappear. Oh, it's the same as the other one. There we go. Each lunatic enemy at this location gets plus one horror value as they walk through the meandering stone halls of the sanatorium. Carolyn began to feel uneasy. It seemed like they would be very would be very easy to get lost. I'm not going to stay here. So one action, two action. My third action will be to generate a resource for Lone Wolf. Will be to investigate here with a Shroud 3 versus a skill 5. Minus 2, so we speed. Have the third clue. So I will uh, trigger Arkham Asylum by spending my three clues. One, two. Whoop. Key to the basement. Turning the corner, you nearly bump into a nurse with a light brown with light brown hair and sharp features. You tell her about the about the violent patients and the strange things you've seen, but she doesn't listen. When you inquire about Daniel, she informs you that he's a patient of Dr. Mintz and that he resides in the secured basement level. Unfortunately, she refuses to let you into the area of, asylum, of the asylum. Investigators must choose or must decide. Any investigator can test a fight for to intimidate her into giving the keys. Any investigator can use agility for to steal the keys from her. Or we can test knowledge for to persuade her to give us the keys. Or I can knock her over and grab the keys. Um, man, I think it's probably smarter to try to persuade her to give us the keys. So I will use my... I will use my... Uh, Streetwise to try to talk her into letting us have the keys. At a five versus a four. Uh, yeah, five versus a four. Altist. This is the amount of horror on me. I only have one because this two, one of those represents uh, my mental trauma. So that is a success. So it's a four versus four. So I succeed. Um, if successful, advance to two A. If failed, you must choose another option. All right. We succeeded in talking her into uh, giving us the keys. So this becomes the uh, oops. Right back. Reveal the next act. This is the really bad ones. Version one this is Daniel is somewhere in the secured basement where the most dangerous patients are kept. Now that you have the key, you can explore this area of the asylum. Ignore the text on the unrevealed side of Arkham Asylum locations. Okay. 
Find the patient confinement location with Daniel Chesterfield. You'll be instructed when to advance. Okay. So we did one, two, investigated three. Don't want to go back there because that's four. Um, I'll stay right where I am. My last action, I will generate a resource. I'm going to whip my guns out here, I think, next turn. Okay, so that is the end of the turn. Let's advance to the uh, upkeep and mythos phase. There are no, still no enemies, so we are uh, into drawing a mythos card. We found a mad patient. Spawn at the nearest asylum halls. Most remaining, he preys on the most remaining sanity. Uh, when you attack a mad patient, take one horror. So he is here. Or, yeah. Here. Wait, how much does he have? Two? I'm going to put him there. Does he spawns at the closest? The nearest asylum. Well, I guess the nearest is the one I'm in. And uh, both the, the rules of uh, engagement say... That means he goes on me, so he's going to be on me, which hurts. Okay, so here we go. It says, when you attack the mad patient, you take one horror. That is awful. Most terrifying of foes is, is, is one's own mind. This one does not say that I have to do any of that. I don't have, I don't have my guns, so I am literally going to... Just fight him twice. Like that. I could do that. You know what I am gonna do that. I'm gonna I'll spend my one resource to sink on my feet. So he would spawn here. I will move to a connecting location. So I will move here. He is here. So that card worked out for me. Okay, so that is the end. Uh, now I would generate an additional resource for uh, my lone wolf. It is our turn. So I have the key, so I can go down here. So one. Thank you. I drifted out of some of the darker hallways. Carolyn asks, do some of these passageways lead underground? Nurse Heather nodded. It's a very old building, Doctor. All right, so we don't, it is now unlocked. So after the basement hall is revealed, put the four set aside patient confinement locations into play. A cramped stone staircase leads deep underground to the basement level of the asylum. Cries and howls of anguish torment you from behind the hall's many iron doors. You can't imagine what it would be like to live your days in this place. Can't. That sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, all of these? No, those are the monsters. Okay, so we get the four containment rooms. Two, three. Okay, and all the containment rooms connect to the basement, so I can put them over here. So they're kind of out of the way. They all connect to it, so it doesn't matter. All right, so one to move in there. There is one clue here in the basement. Uh, when we find Daniel Chesterfield, we'll in, we can advance. So, okay. The one we need a clue to go into here. Okay. So let's look at our hand here. Mm.
All right, so we can investigate here. Cost me two. Get me two plus one overall. That's going to have to be enough. Got it. So I will spend that clue to go into. Let's uh, let's go with this one. We'll go in here. So it says, as an additional cost to enter the patient confinement, you must spend one clue. The heavy metal door is firmly shut and locked from the outside. The thin slit that would allow you to peer inside the door is stuck. We have no idea what the hell is in there. And what is in here? Oh shit, we found his room. Got lucky as hell on that. Uh, Daniel's windowless cell is hopelessly dank and grim. The walls are covered in an erratic scribbling, which upon further inspection appears to be a passage <laughs> to be passages from the King in Yellow. Oh crap, okay. So there's one clue in here, Shroud of Two. It says, after patient confinement is revealed, advance to Act 2B. All right, so we flip that because we found his room. Flip that. Is three geese in a flock. When you enter his cell, you find Daniel huddled in the corner of the room, sobbing and rocking back and forth on the ground. No mask, no mask, he stammers over and over. You, hel you help him to his feet and try to console him, telling him that he is not crazy, that strange events have been occurring throughout the town ever since the King in Yellow returned to Arkham. It's Nigel, he exclaims, gripping you tightly. Nigel made us speak his name. He made us speak the oath, and now he lives inside us, controlling us. You don't understand, he rambles on. We spoke his name, and the price and, and the price was paid. Haster, Haster, O King! You believe, you believe you might understand more about the situation if you can calm him down, but you'll have to get him out of, his asyl out of this asylum if you're to accomplish that. Use an investigator at the patient confinement. Put the set-aside Daniel Chesterfield card in the play under that investigator's control and shuffle the encounter discard pile in each enemy and each enemy beneath the act deck into the encounter deck. So we only have one. That's good. So we get to go get Daniel. At all of these. We get Daniel Chesterfield. Oh, shit. Doesn't work good. He's not going to be that version of him. He's that version. He's the crazy guy. He's with us here. He replaces Leo DeLuca. That kills me. Okay. What else do we got? Shuffle the... This here. And the discard piles goes in. Yep. Shuffle that. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, that will cost us Leo because he, uh, I can only have one ally asset and that will be him. Does the exhaust Daniel Chesterfield to give control of him to another investigator to your location? When you take horror, if at least one of that horror is not assigned to Daniel, take one damage. If he leaves play, remove him from the game. Okay. Ally, but he's a lunatic. Okay. So we were one. Investigated two. Moved in there three. That's it because I lost Leo. So that's it. There's a clue in here. Which I will probably grab because there's you need it for a reason. Okay, so here we go. Off to the next round. Here we go. Um, no enemies that are moving. So he's hanging out there. Mythos phase says, 
We get another dance with the yellow king. If there are no lunatic enemies in play, a dance with the yellow king gains surge. Otherwise, we test brain three. If we fail, the nearest lunatic enemy readies and moves one location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Okay. So he's going to move a bunch if we fail our brain three test. Let's not fail that. That sounds like a bad, a bad time. Okay, so we don't have a way to boost brain other than uh, cards in our hand. So we will. I'll discard guts to make me a brain five versus a three. Nice one for each horror on me. I have one because remember. The one extra horror that I have here is a mental trauma, representing a mental, mental trauma as a reminder for me. So we have uh, succeeded in our Dance with the Yellow King, and I get to draw a card because of my gut's success. Okay, Clasp of Black Onyx. Guess we're going to put that into play. All right, that is our turn. Our Clasp of Black Onyx is in your hand. Increase the cost of each other card in your hand by one. That's horrible. And I don't like it. Okay. I'm going to generate a resource for Lone Wolf. I am going to investigate his patient confinement room to try to gain that one clue. I am up by one. That's going to have to be good enough. Minus one. That's good. So we, uh, we gain that clue. That was one action. My second action will be to move back into the basement hall. Oh, I need to actually put the... Get ahead of myself today. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. So I'm uh, a little more frazzled today than normal. Planning the escape. With or without Danny, you have to get out of this place as soon as you can. Ignore the text on the unrevealed side of Arkham Asylum locations. If the investigation the investigators have performed four of the following... You, you can advance. I uh, I know the Gore's patrols. Nope. I've not set fire in the kitchen. Nope. I have not incited a, a fight amongst the patients. Nope. I have uh, not released a dangerous patient. I've not recalled the, the way out, so I haven't done any of these. So I need to... Shit. Okay. So I've got to... Uh, yeah, I've got to get to work here. Because finding Daniel does not count as releasing a dangerous patient. All right, so that means I need to go back in here. And so investigate, move here. I'll spend the clue I have. And I'm going to assume that I'm going to release a dangerous patient. Here we go. Patient confinement, a dreary cell. A chill envelops the win this windowless cell. Being locked in here for a day would be torturous, let alone for months. Test knowledge two to speak to the patient here. If you succeed, you are able to interpret her ravings and put, remember, you know the guards' patrols. All right, so we are at a knowledge two, a book two. Our stat is three. I can spend two to be at a book five, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Book five versus two, minus two. We now. Tick the box of, we know the guards' patrols. So that's one of them. There is another clue in here. So I started one. Investigated. Moved. Moved. And that's all I can do. So that is the end of our turn. That's some black onyx. It's just going to hang out in my hand for now. First the sense at a four. Counter card. We found a young psychopath. The two fight, two uh, health, three evade. He's a humanoid lunatic. Says, After young fight, psychopath engages you, you must either take one horror or the young psychopath gets plus three fight until the end of the phase. That's horrible. Um, eyes widened. And she and she picked up the knife. Holy crap! She's like gonna engage me here. So I am going to. Uh, I'll take a horror. I'll put. Uh, 
I'll put that on Daniel. There you go, my man. When you, because he has, when you take horror, if at least one of that horror is not assigned to Daniel Chesterfield, I take a damage. I'll go ahead and put one on Daniel. It's fine. Okay, so we are now engaged with this crazy person. Of course, I get to that card now. Let's uh, we'll go ahead and fight her. Let's just take her out, get rid of her. Um, plus one for Lone Wolf. All right, so I can increase my fight here. She is a fight two. I am a fight three. So I can go with one more here, and I'll be at a fight four versus a two. We'll get by two. Skull says minus one. If I fail, which I'm not going to fail, so I do a point of damage to her. And then I will spend a second action to fight her again in the same situation. Minus one is the amount of horror on me. It's still only one. So she is out of here. See ya! Discard her. I will investigate here. Spending two with my last action. Spending two to get me to a uh, book five versus route of three. We draw Cultist. Cultist is still minus only one, so we succeed in getting the clue out of here. And that gives us the end of our turn. There's nothing more I can do. Ready for the next round. Draw a card. Elusive. Nice. Pricey right now, but okay. And the uh, encounter card. Erosion. Need to discard an item assets from play and or your hand with a total printed resource cost of at least X or X is the shroud value of our location. Three. I would take my guns. I don't like that. Item assets. I don't have a lot of item assets. I have my guns. That's Black Onyx. Start item assets from play and or from your hand with a total printed resource cost of at least X where X is shroud value for location if no cards are discarded. I mean, it's going to have to be my uh, my guns in the class for Black Onyx. I don't have anything else I can discard. That's that. The card does not surge, at least, but it's stealing my freaking gear from me, which makes it really hard to uh, fight and do anything. Okay. Um, that's our turn. So, one here. Two. And the one clue I found. See what nightmare lies in wait here. Hello? Bring myself to the front. I'll just go an extra then. Here we go. Occupied cell. Let's test fight two to release the patient. Uh, to release the patient here from his bonds, if you can see he howls like a wolf and tears off through the basement, we can uh, remember that we released a dangerous patient. And this is Shroud 5 here. So it's a fight 2. Lone Wolf gives me 1. I'll spend it right away to be up by 2. We get a 0. So we have released a dangerous patient. That is 2 of these. So I still need to either set the fire in the kitchen, incite a fight amongst the patients, or call the way out. Or distract the guards, as I know the I know the guards patrols, and now I have released a dangerous patient. So one, two. So I have two, two actions. Fine, that is brutal. There, I'll go back here. That's my last action. So move from here. One, two, three. All right, that's it. All I can do.
Another elusive. Another card into our hand. Um, whispers in your head. It's a treachery. Um, I cannot commit skill cards to skill tests. And I discard whispers in my head. Okay. I have to spend two actions to discard it. That's awful. Okay. So our turn here. I'm going to have to spend two to discard that. I can't. I can't discard that. Um. Not looking good, guys. We'll move here. I know I don't want to move there because I'll take horror damage. To gain resources, it's not worth it. I don't want to take horror damage to uh, do that. So instead, I will. As far as I have in my hand right now, six. I will. What uh, I will. I'll draw a card, hoping to find. One of my weapons, or a way to evade, which is good. Okay, so that's the end of my turn. Unfortunately, that went really fast. That is going to trigger the Torturous Descent. We're going to potentially run out of time here. And I know I'm pretty sure running out of time is going to be really poor for us. Uh, the yellow sign, in the back of your mind, a force beckons. Have you seen it? It calls to you. Glimpsing something in your peripheral vision, you turn and find a familiar symbol peering back at you wherever you look. It's etched upon the doors, drawn on the walls, and painted on the patient's canvases. You cannot escape it. The lead investigator must randomly choose an enemy from the among the set-aside monster enemies and shuffle it into the encounter deck without looking at it. That's fine. Check your campaign log. If Constitute Domain is not listed under VIP Slain, search the collection for, for, for search your collection for Constitute Domain. And spawn her in the garden. Um, I don't believe she's dead. I don't think I killed her. I think I just interviewed her. I don't think... I uh, don't believe she's dead. I don't think I killed any of them. Nope. So she is going to spawn in the... In the garden. Little too sociable. Could be. I have her in any of my side stuff. No. All right. Weird, but it doesn't give me. Let's see, I gotta go drag her in here from elsewhere. That's fine. Take one second.
Ça ouais, ça. Yeah, it's weird that they, uh, it won't let me drag that version. It won't let me create it. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's like a weird glitch here with Octagon is that it won't let me. Does it just, no. Because none of those allow me to do it that way. Good to know, though. I mean, I can I can import it from elsewhere. For now, I'll use this one, and then I can I know what it does. So I'll put her up there in the guard so that we know that there. And then we go to uh, his domain. We have eight. Uh, when you place an enemy beneath the act deck, shuffle that enemy into the encounter deck. All right, and we're going to shuffle an enemy into here. Squeeze. Shuffle that. Did it say to shuffle the encounter deck? No. All right, so we got like eight turns to get two of these things done, I think, is pretty much where we're at. So here we go. Let's see, uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, here we go, the uh, Mythos phase. Gonna give me another card to put in my hand. Cool. Gonna force me to discard a card down too. Uh, Whispers in your head. Uh, terror. Doubt. It says, secretly add whispers to your head. Doubt. Your hand. You cannot play events. Okay. That's horrible. Let's see, this is where it's crippling me. One of the other things I forgot to do was put a card face down in front of me. I will do now. And that has two, because I did talk to Constance, it, it gives me two, uh, two horror that I can throw over here. So that's helpful. All right, so that is our turn. Oh boy. Okay, so I cannot the events from my hand. Okay, so one, two, this guy's going to engage me. I will try to evade her. She's crazy. Three versus three. You gain a resource for Lone Wolf. I'll use my Streetwise. Be at a six versus three. You're a zero, so she's evaded. Lost. That's the end of my turn. 
Force me to discard a card. Fine. I will discard that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to discard another card. That's cool. I'll discard both of those. Bye bye. No, I'm at eight. All right. Actually, I don't do it that way. It doesn't work that way. I discarded it already. Oh, I had eight. I discarded down to eight. No. I had to discard two cards. If I had eight cards, I drew one to nine. It's still, I had 10 cards in my hand. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I know how that happened. Because I drew the treacheries. Okay, so... Mythos phase. He readies. Uh, he doesn't attack me yet. Oh, we found some cockroaches. Alright. Um... All right, so our first action, we're going to generate a resource for Lone Wolf. The first action is going to be to spend two to evade them. And I will move to a uh, location where there aren't any enemies. We'll go this way, into there. This is the mess hall. A wide open doorway leads into the asylum's mess hall where patients would have their meals. It's quieter than you expected. There are no chair. There are no chairs uh, scuffling. Scuffing dishes, scuffing, dishes clanking, or patients speaking with one another. What's that? Uh, forced, after you successfully investigate the mess hall, choose and discard one card from your hand. The rows of tables are covered in dirty dishes and stale food. You get the feeling that they took, took mess too literally here. And there are two clues here and one, or in a shroud of two. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that I need those clues, so we're going to, uh, that over here. I will investigate here, Shroud 2 versus Knowledge 3. I will spend 2 to be at a Knowledge 6 versus 2. Got it. And then my last action, I will move into the kitchen. It said ignore the ignore the text on the unrevealed side of Arkham Asylum location, so it is not locked. So I can just walk in there now. Kitchen says, actually, let's flip to the other side and read the flavor text on that one. The narrow door in the back of the mess hall is locked. The scent, the scent that strikes you from behind the door is foul and repugnant. Sounds delicious. Uh, dirty dishes fill the sinks and cover the countertops. An unidentifiable sludge boils on the stove. Uh, two shroud, one clue. If there are no clues in the kitchen, test brain two. If I succeed, remember that I set fire in the kitchen. That's good. We want to set fire in the kitchen. Okay. Oh, and I have to choose and discard a card from my hand for successfully investigating the mess hall. No problem. All right, so we went evade, investigate, move. So we are now in the kitchen. But there is nothing else going on. They are not hunters, so they are both hanging out over here. I will have to uh, be elusive again the next time. Gonna run from them because I have no interest in fighting any of those people. Especially since they get plus one horror. No, thank you. Um, all right, so we're done. Let's move on. Real liquid courage, which is good. Counter card is the yellow sign. This test brain four. If I fail, take two horror and search your deck for a madness weakness and draw that card and shuffle your deck. We don't want any part of that. So we have to we have to pass this, and uh, it's brain, of course, which I don't have anything to boost that. We are in trouble. I draw even, I think. 
Now I think I can draw even. I don't want any of my weaknesses to hit because they're all bad. Hmm. I can get me even. Actually, I can get up up by two by discarding these two. So I'm a six versus a four. Plus one. That would have been nice to know that was coming. Too bad. Too bad, so sad. So we succeed. So nothing happens there. So we don't draw our madness, which is good. Discard that. Okay. So I will uh there's one clue in here, so I will investigate here. Generate my one resource for Lone Wolf. I will uh, investigate here at three versus two. I'll spend two resources to boost for Streetwise. It'd be at a six versus two. Minus one. All right, so now I have successfully lit a fire in the kitchen. So that's three of them, right? I have, I know the guards' patrols, lit a fire in the kitchen, and I released a dangerous patient. So I need to either incite a fight amongst the patients or recall the way out. Or distract the guards, one or the other. Or one of those last one of those last uh three options. I know the guards patrol, I set a fire in the look. Yeah, okay. So that was one. Victory points for that. Got one there. I got one there. One. Go there. I'll investigate there since I want to buzz through that last room. So I will investigate here. I'll do the same thing. I will spend two. Be up. By four. And a minus one. So we gain the clue out of there. We'll have to discard a card from my hand. That'll be the hard knocks over there. That is it. Investigate, move, investigate. I'm going to run out of time pretty soon here. Okay. We found a young psychopath. He hits on me. I'll take a horror here. Okay. Um, okay. So we are, the good part is, is I have a three Y, so I'm going to evade her. I'll spend two to put me at a six versus a three to evade the young psychopath. And it's my uh, four on me. I still only have two on me. I have some horror elsewhere. Oh, I took a point of damage from not putting a horror on Daniel. Um, we have evaded her, so she is exhausted. So one, two, they engage me. I'm going to spend two with my last action to be elusive. And I will, actually, actually, that's a fast play, so it doesn't cost me an action. I messed that up in the previous turn. And that will move me here. Get me out of there. Uh, it takes us into the yard. The fresh air and illusion of freedom makes the asylum's courtyard a common gathering place for patients. Through, through the barred windows, dead tree branches sway in the wind. Gray, overcast skies trap the asylum in a dull limbo. Got a shroud of one. One clue here. It says, while you're investigating the yard, it gets plus one shroud for each horror on you. If there are no clues in the yard, take one damage and remember that I incited a fight amongst the patients. That would be the last one I need because I did. I have know the guards patrol set a fire and released the dangerous patient. Okay, so that is the end of my turn. Actually, wait, no, hold on. I evaded and I moved. That was a fast card that I played here. I still have an action to play. Um, yeah, shroud of two. So I will uh, investigate here. I keep forgetting to generate my or lone wolf. One and two. Oh, I moved her. Hold on. 
2 gives me a 6 versus a 2. 0, so I gain that. Bang. All right, so we have successfully accomplished four of these things. So we now, are, we have planned the escape. Now it's time to escape, I think. A way out. An orderly scream echoes across the hall. Within, within moments, an alarm rings loudly through, through the, throughout the institution. Nurses and guards rush through the asylum in a desperate attempt to control the situation. You feel dazed and your vision is spotty as though you've been struck by something heavy. The walls blur together and, tw and blur together and twist. Creatures begin to emerge from the, from the crevices out of corners that did not exist moments before. The shuffle the encounter discard pile and each enemy beneath the act deck into the encounter deck. No problem. If at least three monster enemies were shuffled into the encounter deck by this effect, the investigator with the lowest brain discards cards from the top of the encounter deck until a monster enemy is discarded and draws that enemy there. That is not going to be the case. So we do not have to deal with that. You have to shuffle the encounter deck back in though. Fine. Here we go. Shuffle. And now we are on to uh, No Asylum, Act 4A. All hell is broken loose. Ignore the text on the unrevealed side of Arkham, Arkham Asylum locations. No problem. Uh, the garden gains. Action. If there is no ready enemy in the garden, we can resign. Uh, objective. If each undefeated investigator has resigned, we advance. So we'll need to... Uh, we've got Constance hanging out up there, which we, uh, we know about. She is a one evade, so we're just going to go in there and evade her. Oh, she is a hunter, so she, oh, she should have been moving the whole time. Shit. Oh, well. I didn't notice that, so that's fine. She'll uh, she'll hunt us this turn and come and come land on us. She would have been in the asylum halls. That's where she would have been. So it would have been no big deal. We would have just evaded her with uh, elusive anyway. So it ends up being about the same. Okay, so here we go. That was uh, the end of our turn. So we are going to advance. Our bandolier doesn't do us a whole lot of good now. And the encounter card is we found some more roaches. <sighs> oh, and actually she should have moved on us and done a, uh, some damage to us. So we're going to take some damage here. Not on him. We will take it. Ugh. Yeah. All right. So she's on us. Now we got some roaches, and it's our turn, so we are going to have to shit. Gain that. I will spend my first action. I will only spend one resource for hard knocks to uh, get my agility up to four to evade constants. Minus. X for each one for each horror. There's only one horror on me, so she is exhausted. Now I will play my manual dexterity, giving me a agility of five against three, and then I will discard two to increase my agility to eight. Here we go. Plus one, so now the roaches are also evaded. I'm going to need to evade one more time because I don't think I'll have the action to. And then I will move to the garden. And the gate leading into the garden is locked. You cannot enter the garden. It is not locked. As a lone statue stands sentinel over the garden, cold wind causes dead leaves to roll gently across the garden path. And the garden says... Uh, three shroud, one clue. If there are no clues on the garden, test agility two. Uh, if you succeed, remember that you distracted the guards. I don't care about that. I care about being able to uh, resign at the uh, the garden. I don't have an action to do that this turn, so I will have to do it next turn. I do get to draw a card for successfully evading, though. With the old holy rosary, that would have been nice a while back. A bandolier on to give me another hit point. All right, so when monsters are going to move, none of these guys are hunters, so they all are going to stay. 
Constance is a hunter, so she moves and attacks and hits me again for two. She only got a one agility, though. She's just terrible. But she's up. And now we are going to ready. And ready. We get... Oh, there it is. You suck so bad. Yeah, nothing I can do about any of that. She's just going to go there, and that's going to cause me a mental trauma at the end. Nothing I can do about that at all. Like, at all. There's nothing I can do. Like, the worst card to draw at the very end, because I'm, I think I'm going to escape here, but I'm going to miss the opportunity to, uh, yeah, that hurts really, really bad. Okay, so, um, Mythos phase. There's a Descent into Madness. If I have at least three horror on you, I lose an action. I do not. Urges in two. A mad patient at the nearest asylum hall. So that's cool. We'll just put that guy right there. There's just a whole bunch of mad patients in the asylum halls. Like a pile of them. There's two in that asylum halls. All right, so it's our turn. Um, I just need to evade Constance and then I can resign. So I will generate a resource for Lone Wolf. I will spend two resources to give me an agility of six versus her agility of one. Auto fail figures. We'll do it again. Skull. Skull is minus one. So we have evaded her. And now I can spend an action to resign. And I will resign. So we have successfully escaped the asylum. I'm going to take a mental trauma for that absolutely abysmal last card draw. All right, so we flip. Escape! If you took the keys by force, read the following. We did not take them by force. We uh, talked the uh, lady into giving them to us. Otherwise, read the following. The guards are too busy controlling the situation and restraining the asylum's patients you, to notice your escape. We get we get uh, resolution three. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look at resolution three. We get resolution. Here we go. Walk that over. There's resolution three. Each defeat investigator should resolve the investigator's defeat first. We don't have any of those. This with the asylum staff distracted and patients running amok, you're able to slip away without being noticed. You escape deeper into the garden behind the asylum. There where a two story two story tall fence topped with barbed wire is all that separates you from the outside world. You have you have little time and need to ma make it far away from the asylum before the guards return spotting you. Using a straight jacket using a straight jacket You'd found inside inside to cover the barbed wire. You scale the fence quickly, breaking into a run as you make it to the other side. It says in our campaign log, uh, record that the investigators escaped the asylum. We escaped the asylum. We escaped the asylum. Uh, each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Let's take a look at what those would have been really quick. We investigated the infirmary, so that's one. We did the basement hall, that's two. We did the mess hall, that's three. We actually got some experience in this. We got three. None of these other locations have anything. Nope, so we did three. We got three. We get three XP, so we have five total now. So I'll probably find something to do with those. Uh, remove all the cultist tablet and 
uh, elder thing tokens from the cast bag and add two elder things. So we add, we add two elder things. to the cast bag and remove all the other ones. And then we get to interlude to the Lost Soul. If the ally version of Daniel Chesterfield was in play when the scenario ended, proceed to Daniel survived. He did. We have him. Uh, you decide to lay low for some time for some time at Ma's boarding house and hide Daniel from the authorities. Although you're unsure how long you'll, you'll be able to stay in Arkham with an escaped asylum patient, Daniel is a loose cannon, dazed and unresponsive one moment and screaming for his life the next. It takes several days for him to realize he's no longer institutionalized, which for some reason makes him even more terrified. He's coming for me! He's coming for me! He rambles sometimes for hours at, at a time. Finally, during an, during an unusually warm and starry night, Daniel is calm enough to open up to you. The King in Yellow, it's not just a play, he explains. It's a being named Haster, and he's already claimed me, but there's still time for you. You are not yet possessed. You have, you have yet to speak the oath. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do not speak his name. Do not give in. You ask him about the strange events that have been happening across the town and all the cultists and creatures you've encountered. They're trying to find Carcosa, he, he says matter-of-factly. You recognize the name as a fictional city from the play from the play, the one the King in Yellow rules over. They want to release Haster from his prison, but you, you can open the way to Carcosa before they do. You can seal Haster for good. He grips you tightly as he rants, quickly before the stranger discovers our plan. Hours later, Daniel is incoherent and unresponsive once more. You take a long walk to ease your thoughts, mulling over the new information. You're unsure what to make of his wild claims. Before he, before you can make a decision about what to do next, you return to find the door to your room broken open. Daniel lies in a heap on the ground, his face colorless and body limp. But judging from the bruising around his neck, you surmise that he's been choked to death. Each investigator earns two additional experience as they gain insight into the machinations of the Tattered King. Excellent, so we gain two more experience for a total of seven. That was an amazing quest for us generate some some experience the investigator must decide choose one uh, possession oaths there must be another explanation for all of this proceed to ignore the warning or we must heed daniel's warning and we must not speak the name of the king in yellow proceed to heed the warning we will heed the warning i am not a crazy person all right Just heed the warning for hours you struggle with this insight into the king in yellow what is true, what is real, only you can sort through this madness. In our campaign log, record that you heeded Daniel's warning. All right, so we heed Daniel's warning. Daniel's warning. Uh, mark two conviction on our campaign log. We have two conviction. Okay. Each investigator earns one additional experience as they gain insight into the machinations of the Tattered King. Holy crap, eight XP going into the next mission. Um, for the remainder of the campaign, anytime an investigator speaks the name Hester aloud during a scenario or during the setup of a scenario, that investigator must immediately take one horror. That is absolutely incredible. I love that. And proceed to scenario five, A Phantom of Truth. All right, so we cannot uh, speak uh, the name that must not be spoken aloud during the rest of the scenario. Otherwise, we immediately take a horror. That is fantastic. And uh, that is the end of, uh, of the mission for today. I, uh, I appreciate everybody who's uh, checking this out and watching me fumble around because I've never played any of these. So these are brand new to me. So for that, I apologize about some of the clunkiness of how the game flows. But uh, I'm learning it on the fly, just like uh, anybody else who's uh, never played it. Um, I will be posting the VOD of this one over on my YouTube channel a little bit later today over at Broncos Gaming World. I will be uh, giving another hard swing at the Lord of the Rings saga campaign quest, The Journey of the Crossroads. I probably won't be doing that until Tuesday, because I really needed to work on my, uh, my deck build for that that mission because that thing is just an ass kicker um i'll be playing lord of the rings on tuesdays still around four o'clock p.m eastern 
and playing Arkham here on Thursdays around 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, check out all of my other content. I'm going to be posting more and more Warhammer uh, 40K content over on my YouTube channel as well. Some painting stuff, some painting and building, uh, and some looks at some of my old uh, my old stuff because I've got all sorts of old Hammer stuff over there. Um, until next time, guys, I really appreciate you, and I will uh, see everybody next Tuesday, if not 